Space travel is a really big deal right now on the space coast of Florida. Rockets have been blasting off this sandbar since the 1950s, all different programs with different missions. I'm here on my own mission. My name's Katie, and I'm on the hunt for the world's coolest space memorabilia. Trust me, you've never seen space like this before. But first, a bit about where my adventure began. I was first hired as an educator at Kennedy Space Center's Visitors Complex, where I taught children and adults from around the world. It changed my life. It inspired me so much that I went back to school where I was challenged like never before to become an aerospace technician and learn what it really took to work at NASA. I was lucky enough to attend a NASA Scholars trip, which led to a paid internship working at the Kennedy Space Center. I had worked so hard to get there. I felt like I was on top of the world. At the end of the summer, I accepted a job with OneWeb Satellites, helping launch 76 satellites into geosynchronous orbit. The main point is to never give up no matter what you're dealing with. Even when you're knocked down from the highest point of your life, keep going. You never know where you'll end up. Sorry about stabbing you in the feels there, friend. Let's get back to today's exciting field trip, shall we? I'm taking us to Cape Canaveral, where sun, sea, and space all meet. You might notice on your drive along State Road A1A that there are many different surf shops and beach shops that look like this and offer a lot of made in China wholesale goodies. Now, I'm going to stop you right here and tell you that this isn't what Cape Canaveral's about. It's mind-blowing when we see how far we've come from Alan Shepard's flight in 1961. Cape Canaveral is one of the most unique places in America. It's the only place in the U.S. where people are leaving the Earth almost on a daily basis. I can't really think of anything cooler than that. It's an honor to live during a time period when I get to see us working as one towards something greater than ourselves. Cape Canaveral's story is a human experience. It's our evolution, our history, and our future. Don't miss out on experiencing it. With that said, here's the space museum I'm taking you to today. The Sands Space Museum is in Port Canaveral and very, very close to Cape Canaveral's Air Force Base, recently redesignated as the Space Force Base. Yeah, that one's kind of a tongue twister. You might notice that while you're driving on 401 towards the museum, you'll be passing cruise ships to your right. When you get further down, you may notice the guard station up ahead. Not to worry, you'll be turning a right into the museum before you get to the Air Force Base Guards. A helpful landmark to look out for is the Navajo missile stationed outside of the front entrance. Basically keep an eye out for a large red and white missile. It's a beautiful day to go to the Sand Space Museum together. First, we're going to pass two buildings. There's Space Florida, an aerospace economic development agency. And then next over is SpaceX's Launch and Landing Controls Building. You can see the Crew Dragon flag they have hoisted on the flagpole. Engineers work inside of this building and keep a very close eye on launches. While the SpaceX building is super cool, Make sure to look and not touch or go inside. Security is taken very seriously. The Sand Space History Center is inside here. The coolest part about this museum is that you never know who is volunteering inside. You can hear firsthand from people who worked in the space program. My brain right now is kind of like that rocket exploding on the television screen. I'm in space heaven. Of course, I'm immediately attracted to the patches. Space patches are one of my favorite things to collect. They're all unique and capture either the essence of a mission or a special moment in space history. 
A lot of artistic effort go into them. Usually a crew of astronauts will have a say in the design ideas. Patches are also just generally fun to collect. Can you blame me? Though I try to only collect missions that really interest me, or else you'll end up with hundreds and hundreds of patches. What you're looking at now is a console that engineers use to check out the Titan II missile, which launched our Gemini astronauts. Think mid-1960s. There's a generation of kids today that have no idea how a rotary phone works. This here is a nose cone that belongs to a Jupiter missile. Looks a little beat up, doesn't it? This nose cone was actually flown and recovered from the Atlantic Ocean. It's a reality of human history that our space program today evolved from weapons of destruction. The nose cone that you're looking at right now was meant to protect these warheads when the missile re-entered the atmosphere and towards its intended target. And well, if you ask me and what I think, I think carrying people for the sake of exploration is better. I am now looking inside of a rocket engine, the LR-91 from Aerojet. These pipes or tubes carry the cryogenic liquid oxygen, which would flow through here to help cool down the engine during ignition in a process called regenerative cooling. It's very cool to get up close and personal with real aerospace artifacts. Who gets to say that they were this close to a rocket engine? And this pipework? This pipework is craftsmanship. To seal any gaps between the tubes, the nozzle was brazed, done either in a huge furnace or by hand. The part that excites me the most about aerospace is how real it is. This? This is real. Human hands evolved to use tools to make a rocket engine like this possible. All of the inner workings that seem impossible come to life here. There's nothing hiding here. Nothing that is impossible. No conspiracies, no fake film, no hoaxes, no flat earth. While it is so much easier to believe the impossible, we see here that there is skill, dexterity, resolve even. Woven into these fabrication processes is a resolve so human it jolts us with a sudden realization. Our capabilities are real. Our resolve is real. Our story and history, real. I couldn't help but to also include this, a periscope with various astronaut signatures on it. I could make out Gene Cernan's and Buzz Aldrin's on the bottom. The other signatures were a little bit too faded for me to see. Who else can you find here? Feel free to post on the comments on whose astronaut names you can find. And now that we've had fun in the museum, I'm scoping out my favorite spot in the whole joint, the gift shop. <laughs> yes, yes. The museum has an interesting collection of early space history memorabilia that you can purchase. I really like these postcards. I mean, hey, there's nothing cooler than a vintage space postcard sent from Cape Canaveral, hey? Don't knock on it. It's old school and fun. I see here that my friend Jean Wright, a seamstress who worked on the space shuttle, has dropped off some masks made lovingly. There's also tons of SpaceX t-shirts, get your butt to Mars t-shirts, and some really cute stuff that I want. Okay, okay, I'm not going to lie. I really want that satellite coloring book. That's totally up my alley. I wanted to thank you so much 
for following me along my space museum adventure. Make sure to visit the Sands History Space Museum because it is free. How many times do you get to do something for free, especially if you're on vacation? Keep a lookout for my future videos where we'll get to geek out over space memorabilia together. It's a mission, but somebody's got to do it. Until next time, this has been Katie reporting from Cape Canaveral.